Hi all. In this particular session, we will study about wide band gap devices. So what do you mean by this wide band gap? So you might have studied about semiconductors. There will be a valence band. There will be a conduction band. All these things you have studied. So this band gap, so you know what is a band gap, right? So in this particular session, we are studying about wide band gap devices, silicon carbide and gallium nitrate. And it has some advantages uh, when compared to the normal semiconductor devices. It's also, it's also a semiconductor device. Okay, let's see. Wide band gap semiconductor devices, as the name says, we also known as WBG semiconductors, are semiconductor materials which have a large band gap. The band gap, that is the valence band, the band, the forbidden band or band gap between the valence band and the conduction band will be larger. That's why we call them wide band gap than the conventional semiconductors. So we have silicon, conventional semiconductor silicon. They have a band gap in the range of 0.6 to 1.5 electron volt. Whereas wide band gap, it can go up to two electrons. That's the main difference. So main difference is the band gap can go up to two electron volt. Whereas in normal silicon semiconductor, it goes 0.6 to 1.5. And what is band gap? The energy band gap, the gap between valence band and the conduction band. So, so I have given you the notes also here because most of the uh, subject, uh, the, uh, uh, the phenomena in this uh, particular subject is theoretical. So in order to, you to have a better theoretical understanding, I have given you the notes also. You can like, write down the notes as well as listen to me. The energy required for electrons and holes to transition from the valence band to the conduction band is called band gap. So it needs some energy to move from valence band to conduction band. So silicon has a band gap of 1.12 electron volt. A semiconductor with a larger value is called a wide band gap semiconductor. The best examples are silicon carbide and gallium nitrate. So we are studying silicon carbide and gallium nitrate. So you, so according to your KTU syllabus, this can come as a three mark question or a maximum five mark question. So you should know to. So you should draw this diagram, then uh, write about band gap. So it has a bit larger band gap. All these things you can write. Okay. So what is the advantage that we have when we use a larger band gap? So larger energy gap allows higher power and temperature operation and the generation of more energetic photons. Okay. So like when we have a larger band gap, so wide energy band gap, it allows higher power and temperature operation, and also it can generate more photons. Okay, apart from silicon carbide and gallium nitrate, then aluminum nitrate, indium nitrate, and silicon carbide have recently become feasible. So they are examples of wide band gap devices. And even uh, materials like diamond. So since the investigation is going on, so I have given a comparison chart also. So you can see the difference in band energy gap for gallium nitrate, indium nitrate, aluminum nitrate. So it's how from the valence band to the, so you can see more number of photons are also being generated here. So what is band gap and why it matters? So already explained, energy required to extend electrons from the valence band to the conduction band, that is band cap. If band cap is large, then a higher critical electric field is required to initiate impact ionization, thus causing avalanche breakout. So more uh, large means we need more electric field. So the device will have high reverse voltage withstanding capabilities. So wide band cap device will have high reverse voltage withstanding capability, which can be calculated as breakdown voltage is equal to one by two into drift to width into critical electric field. Drift to width means the band gap width. For same breakdown voltage, WBG size will be small. So that you have a breakdown voltage, the minimum energy at which the, the electrons will jump. So, so for the same electron voltage, the size of wide band gap device is very small compared to normal silicon semiconductor. Due to large band energy, high temperature is required to force ionization. So high temperature operation is possible. That's why I told you high temperature operation is variations in temperature is possible. Then wide uh, devices, uh, the picture is given here. This is silicon carbide, gallium nitride, even diamond is there. So you can see the band gap 
silicon carbide is 3.3, then gallium nitride is 3.4, and diamond is 5.5, but because of its cost and all, we're not using it that much. But you see silicon, it is 1.1, germanium, it is 0.7, gallium acid is 1.4. So these many uh, components are wide band gap devices, WBG, we say like that. So why we use them? So this is very important examination point of view, lower on resistance, faster switching speed and lower switching losses, high operating temperature, better thermal conductivity, smaller in size. For the same band gap, you, I, I explained that the, the size of WBG, that is wide band gap will be smaller than lower cost, so excluding diamond, of course, highly reliable and durable, high voltage blocking capability. I told you, breaking capacity is equal to 1 by 2 into that width into electric field also. So again, we can just compare the parameters, not only band gap, other things also for silicon, gallium nitrate. So silicon and gallium nitrate are wide band gap. And this is the normal semiconductor. So you can see the difference in the band gap, then critical electric field, then electron mobility, permittivity, thermal conductivity. So all these differences you can see. And coming to the application, so some of the practical areas where we are using, height, if it enables higher efficiency variable speed drives. So motor system uses a 69% of electricity consumed in US manufacturing. So, so using a wide band gap material will be very efficient because it gives a higher efficiency for the variable speed drives, one application. And moving ahead, we can see that on electric cars, we use wide band gap materials, WGBG materials, powertrain of Tesla electric car and all uses this a larger energy gap material. And if you compare with the conventional system in a data center, conventional power system, you can see that initially AC to DC is there, then DC invert, whatever. So it's a very complex uh, process. You need a UPS also. So that efficiency was 97 percentage, but by using a wide band gap devices, we have a solid state transformer, which is silicon carbide based solid state transformer is used. So it's a medium voltage, so you can see 98 percentages, and here, here again, we are using gallium nitrate for DC to DC. So that also is very, because we have something called smart transformer these days, or we can, you can say, even say solid state transformers, which has many higher advantages compared to the conventional transformer. So here we are using using wide band gap material. Then for electro electric vessel, now we're in this era of electric vehicles for fast charging. So all of us need fast charging, right? So we use silicon carbide here. So these are the ratings and all for the fast charging. So we have a WBG inside. So this is in brief about uh, wide band gap material, silicon carbide and silicon nitrate, carbon nitrate. So you should know the band gap difference, the figure you can draw, how the electrons are jumping, then more photons are generated. Then you can say uh, the advantages of uh, like why we need them, like low, low cost, uh, less in size, all these things are more efficient. Then the applications also we can manage. Thank you.